the confrontation. Laying completely flat and the dark skies blinking with lightning, fear overtook him. And a screech that quieted the skies stilled the wings of birds and muted the earth better than the longest snow filled the world of sight. Gripping the rod in his hands, he stood up. He could hear his footsteps in the boat. They echoed. The silence was overwhelming. Every shuffle of his clothing could be heard. The storm ceased. The clouds broke, but did not give way to the sun. And the air stilled. He stood up, seeing nothing before him. And suddenly a dark cloud began to cast a shadow in front of him. And it continued to stretch and widen for almost a mile and then stopped. But this wasn't a cloud. He looked down at his fishing line. It curled behind him and he followed it with his eyes. And the fisherman turned the sounds of the boat creaking beneath his feet. There, the glowing bait sat clenched between teeth as long and jagged as the tallest mountains. Scales like mithril shield and nostrils like caverns stretching across the sea. The adult's heart fought to leave his chest, his throat tightening and his hands and feet tingling. Everything was pleased. His eyes met with the reptilian slits of the beast, and it watched him, neck curled, whiskers flickering in the silent sea. The sea dragon was called forth, and its screech echoed for miles. The adult saw the face of a hyena and amphibious flesh, gills on its neck, and a white tuft of hair at the top of its head that traveled down its spine. On its underbelly, human arms and legs could be seen intertwined and pierced with arrows. The arrows looked familiar, like the same arrows that put him to sleep. The boat gently swayed, and the adult's fear began to loosen its grip. They locked eyes. The beast let out another stilling screech, blowing the adult back onto his hind but he maintained the grip on the fishing rod, feeling his body shrink in size. And it wasn't metaphoric. He was truly shrinking in size. He was the teen. And the beast let out a third screech. And he became the boy. And the glowing bait was released from the beast, the fishing line tightening towards the boy. The beast lowered its huge body into the silent sea, each sound reverberating for a short period of time. And then its head resurfaced from the waters and rested level across the boat and the boy, the slits of its eyes like doors into a new world watching him. The beast was inviting the boy to mount its head. So he took the invitation hesitantly. But upon his first step, he fell into the boat, feeling pain in both of his legs. And upon him trying to yell, he felt a pain in his chest, the arrows. The boy began to cry. He tried to remove the arrows so that he could mount the dragon, but they were stuck. And he wanted to get angry. He wanted to go forward, but he couldn't. The arrows were a memory of his pain, and he would never forgive his parents. They don't deserve my forgiveness. They hate me. So everything created a vision. In this vision, he saw his parents being pulled by a huge fish in a boat similar to his. The boat crashed along the coast of Amaria, and the huge fish broke their fishing line and got away. So they created a bow and arrow from the broken wood and fishing line and vowed to shoot at anything that tried to escape their authority. 
and they were excellent archers. They wanted a particular life for the boy and planned on how it should go. But they noticed him packing his clothes one day and everything continued the vision. He saw them crying on the day the boy decided to leave the unknown in the place of time. He saw his mother grab their bow and arrow, draw the arrow back just before the boy entered the woods. He watched his mother release the arrow and she fell into his father's arms crying as the arrows hit the boy. They weren't ready for him to leave, but they also didn't know him. And the arrows were just arrows, and he began to understand that. They didn't hate him. They just didn't understand him. The arrows fell out and hit the bottom of the boat, and he marched forward confidently. And everything followed him. The scales of the dragon were hard as stone, its white hair sprouting from the cracks like flowers growing through the cobblestone of Amaria. Its ears were like wings, spanning out far and wide, and a few feet along its neck was a blowhole. And daylight broke. The sun burned through the clouds and seagulls could be heard again. What's happening? The boy thought, who was once the adult. The dragon screeched and lifted the boy on its head, shooting hundreds of feet into the sky, spiraling upwards and then down again before taking him and everything across the seas of sight. It can fly, he thought. And he realized all in that moment what had happened. The beast became his ship, his chariot. And Amaria could be seen in the distance as the dragon shot across the sea and it appeared back to normal. The hallway of shops were running again. Children were seen playing and his friend was fishing and building different things. The boy smiled and closed his eyes and he opened them again as the adult, sitting high into the sky on the dragon's head over the bright and loving Amaria. And he could see his parents in the village of fishermen watching him and they gave him a light nod of approval, and he smiled. And suddenly, the dragon flicked its head back, causing the adult to loosen his grip of its hair, tumbling down its neck, and the adult yelled, rolling and knocking against tough scales of the dragons. He grabbed onto the edge of the dragon's blowhole cliff hanging, and suddenly, the dragon immediately curled forward and pushed air from its blowhole, launching him high into the sky, into the highlands of height. <laughs>